Did you hear about the economy? No. What about the economy? They announced another round of the sucking. No, seriously. What about the economy? The unemployment rate continues to rise while the inflation persists, in stark contradiction to the Phillips curve and highly suggestive of stagflation, a shift therein. What on earth did you just say? It is a little difficult to explain in the words. Well, try to use the words. If you cannot then at least remember that we have the arms and can do the funny motions to help explain it. All right, then, sheep. Let's get started. How much do you know about the economics? You mean the supply and the demand? Well, it's slightly more complicated than that. How slightly? Not slightly at all. You see, the supply and the demand are basic concepts of the microeconomics and need to be adapted for the macroeconomics. Okay. Well what if you barely know anything about the supply and the demand? Oh, sheep. You have much to learn. Okay. Let's say you want to buy the gasoline, and the price of the gasoline is the two dollars. Holy. I seriously want to buy the gasoline. In comparison to normal, how much of the gasoline will you buy? I will buy a lot of the gasoline because of the ridiculous price. Okay sheep, you are doing well. Now let's say you still want to buy the gasoline, but the price is now the four dollars. So the price of the gasoline is doing the rising? Yes. Well, if it continues rising then I will have to buy it at an even higher price. Better to buy a lot now than to buy a lot later. I will buy more of the gasoline now. Exactly, you buy less of the gasoline because of the higher price choking off the demand. Wait a minute. Did you say you would buy more of the gasoline? Yes. Okay sheep, listen in. I understand how you reached that conclusion, but in actuality you would buy less of the gasoline. At a higher price you want less of it. Uh... What you are saying is that you would buy more at this higher price because you anticipate another increase in the price, reversing the logic. But you really do not know if the price of the gasoline will continue to do the rising. Yes I do. The laws of the physics say so. Okay I am never going to use the price of the gasoline as a demonstration of the law of the demand, ever again. Why not? I now have a firm grasp of the law of the demand, that demand rises when prices rise. If you said that in my economics 101 class I would have thrown you out. Literally. I guess that is not the law of the demand. Let's look at the bigger picture. Of all the things you buy, do you buy more or less of the stuff when the price does the lowering? More. What about when the price does the rising? Less. Good. Sheep, you are making progress. This is the law of the demand. People demand more of the stuff when the price does the lowering. Okay. Now suppose you are all the manufacturers and producers in the country. That is a stretch of the imagination. I know, but I left this project till the last minute, so bear with me and give your programmed response. Very well. My response is, okay, I am following you so far. In actuality, I am getting lost already. Anyway, let's say you had to lower your prices and sell the stuff at the much lower price. Suppose, for instance, you sell the cheeseburgers. And the price of the cheeseburgers is now the two and a half cents plus tax. That is a very low price. I do not want to sell many of the cheeseburgers. Good. Now let's say you sell the cheeseburgers but at a much higher cost. Let's say that the cheeseburgers now cost as much as a two bedroom cottage. Are you still following this, sheep? Yes. Good. Now, as a producer, you want to make a lot of money while selling the cheeseburgers. Will you sell more of the cheeseburgers or less of them now that your price is higher? Well if the cheeseburger costs as much as a two bedroom cottage, then I would expect to make a great deal of money and therefore would be motivated to sell more of the cheeseburgers. So far this is correct. If I sell more of the cheeseburgers, and the cheeseburgers cost as much as a two bedroom cottage, do I expect to sell all the cheeseburgers that I produce? Does that mean I get to own billions and billions of the two bedroom cottages? Not exactly. 
The so-called law of the supply is this. You will sell more of the stuff when the price does the rising and less of the stuff when the price does the lowering. This seems kind of backwards compared to the law of the demand. There is a subtle and deep reason. What is the reason? That we were talking about the law of the supply, and not the law of the demand. That is a very deep reason and was not at all obvious. Thank you. No problem. Anyway, what do you think happens when the price does the lowering too far? Well, the prices will be very low, so the buyers will want to buy a lot of the stuff. But the suppliers will supply less of the stuff because they cannot make as much of the profits. Correct. What do you think happens when the prices do the rising too far? Then the buyers will not want as much, but those greedy supplier jarheads will look to make a lot of the profits and so they will sell a lot more of the stuff. So I pose this question to you, sheep. Is there ever a point where the buyers buy all that the suppliers supply? Yes. That is correct. The point where this happens is called the equilibrium point. Its coordinates are the price where the buyers buy everything the suppliers supply, and also the quantity of the stuff that is being bought and sold. Okay, I think I have a real understanding of the supply and the demand now. That's good, sheep. What is the law of the demand? You buy more of the stuff when the prices rise because the laws of the physics say the prices will keep rising. Just kidding. Okay, good. Now how does this apply to the big picture? I'm glad you asked that question. If you understand the basic idea of the supply and the demand from the microeconomics, then I will begin to discuss the aggregate supply and the aggregate demand. What is the aggregate supply and the aggregate demand? The aggregate demand is like the demand, except that it adds up all of the stuff that the people are demanding. The aggregate supply adds up all of the stuff that the people are supplying. How do you do the adding of the demand? Doing the direct addition of the prices does not make much of the sense, and neither does the quantity. What are the units for the quantity of all these different things and stuffs? Instead of the price and the quantity, we need to use the new units to make sense of the summation. We will use the price level instead of the price, and the real gross domestic product instead of the quantity. Okay, I am totally stumped now. What on earth are the price level and the real grain fantastic product? You mean the real gross domestic product? That is the measurement of the total of all the final goods and services produced in the America. Uh... The price level is like the price, except it doesn't have numerical value. I am trying to follow this. It is okay if it is difficult to understand. Most students in the Mark Sabo's class would agree that the macroeconomics is a significant paradigm shift from the microeconomics. Okay, seriously, stop confusing me with your long words. Now that I have given you the basic definition of the aggregate supply and the aggregate demand, I will do a concept check. Oh, no. What do you think the intersection of the aggregate demand and the aggregate supply represents? No. Okay sheep listen closely. You remember the equilibrium point from earlier? Yes. In the macroeconomics the equilibrium point represents the current state of the economy with the frame of the reference of the price level and the real GDP. Basically how high the prices tend to be, and how much stuff is going around. Okay that makes some sense. Is there ever something which makes people want to buy more of the stuff, regardless of the price? Yes. That is called a shift in the aggregate demand curve and it frequently results from technological advances, an increase in the budget, or a likewise straightforward demand increases. Ah, that makes sense. What does this do to the equilibrium? Well, the equilibrium point has to shift when the aggregate demand shifts. Generally, when the aggregate demand does the increasing, the price level and the real GDP both do the increasing as well. What happens when the real GDP does the increasing? An economist would say that our nation is becoming more wealthy and prosperous. That sounds good. What happens when the price level does the increasing? We have the inflation. What is the inflation? The inflation is when prices of the things we buy go up. Isn't that bad? According to the Ben Bernanke, the inflation will create the jobs and improve the housing market. Has this been tested in the past? 
Yes, just last year the Fed pumped $2 trillion into the economy by doing the quantitative easing. Did that create the jobs? No. Did it improve the housing market? Not at all. Did it help anybody at all? Yes, it helped the Goldman Sachs. Okay, I have to go now. I think I need to raise my prices. What do you mean? I sell the cheeseburgers at the two and a half cents plus tax at the gas station down the road from my two-bedroom cottage. Is that so? Yes. I have to go now. One last thing. What is the Goldman Sachs? The Goldman Sachs is an evil empire, but that is the topic of a whole other video. Goodbye.